Hi everyone, how's it going today? We are live and I'm trying a slightly earlier time than usual just to see. I mean, it's always hard to choose a time to live stream, but hopefully this will be slightly more doable for some folks. Um, one of my goals is to try to do like wildly different times and just see which live streams seem to get the most traffic. Um, not that numbers is like, like I don't really care how many people show up, but like I want to make sure that everyone could get a chance to attend if they wanted to. So um, yeah, we'll see how this works. I have quite a few topics I want to talk about, but if you want to um, suggest topics or talk about what you're reading, feel free to drop a comment in the chat and we can uh, change focus because like this is going to be really laid back and like super informal. So I haven't really done my Christmas decorating officially yet. Um, this is clearly the extent of what I've done so far. Um, and these aren't actually things I'm been putting here. I just got the decor out and I keep looking at it and you know, this week has just been crazy. So I'm hoping to get all that figured out this week and stop, uh, stop procrastinating. Usually I would, um, decorate like the day after Thanksgiving, but this, this, uh, this year I've just been super busy with lots of different things, including some reading. So let me talk about, uh, let me see, where should I start? I could talk about my trip to the bookstore. So, uh, that's the other thing we are still we are still in a shutdown of sorts. I mean, you can still go places. They're trying to limit capacity in a lot of stores. Um, but I did go to the bookstore the other day, which is never super high capacity anyway. And it was just really nice uh, hanging out for an hour or so. Um, I think I looked at pretty much everything. It's not a huge bookstore, but it was fun. There weren't a lot of people there. And it was just nice. Um, I haven't been to a small bookstore like that in, I mean, probably since, uh, since the last haul I did, which was like May, June. I can't remember. I can't, I can't seem to remember <laughs> the timeline this year. Um, so I went there and I didn't really, so I'm on a book buying ban for the rest of the year, except, you know, books I get for Christmas. Um, I felt like I should buy something though, since I was taking up a lot of space in their bookstore. And I found this beautiful copy of Shakespeare's Sonnets. And this was secondhand. Um, this was not a book I was looking for, but I thought it was a nice presentation of the sonnets. And to be completely honest, I have never read these. I mean, I've read maybe a couple of them, but not in full. So I thought this would be a nice, manageable way to read some more Shakespeare. Um, and oops, um, I got a discount on this too, because I have donated books in the past to the bookstore. So it really ended up being a super good deal. There was one I really liked that I was reading the other day. Where is it? Let's see, I should have um, I should have marked it because I I don't even remember which page it was. So I will probably do a video on this at some point and maybe read one or two of the sonnets. I'm not like a Shakespearean reader by any means, but it'd be kind of fun to go through. Um. I know a lot of people are huge Shakespeare fans. Is anybody watching a big fan? Have you read all of Shakespeare? Um, my experience with Shakespeare has been kind of a rocky road, if you will. Um, I think my first exposure to him was going to a like a high school stage production of Oh, what was it called? It was one of the comedies. Let me see if I can find it here. And maybe because it was a high school production, it was just not 
a great experience. I mean, to be fair, they did their best and everything, but um, also the play was kind of strange. I think it was Twelfth Night. Yeah, so um, high school production of Twelfth Night. And it, it was it was okay. It just was very strange to me. Um, the other... So, so apart from that, I have read Romeo and Juliet and Macbeth and... Oh, what was the third one? Oh, yes, Hamlet, of course. The three of the, you know, major major ones and I did not like Romeo and Juliet I just did not click with it at all on any level and I didn't really get Macbeth or like I didn't appreciate it I guess it, it was kind of underwhelming to me however Hamlet was a better experience you know by that point I didn't have huge expectations I guess but I really did enjoy Hamlet. I was able to actually connect with the story and just enjoy the experience and the beautiful language of Shakespeare. Um, I think what I would want to do going forward reading Shakespeare, because I don't, I don't want to give up, right? Like I've barely scratched the surface. I think I would like to take a class or maybe watch some YouTube lectures because I underestimated the amount of knowledge you need to understand Shakespeare and I'm not like someone who enjoys reading annotated versions so I don't see myself getting an annotated copy and reading that by myself but maybe watching a video or joining a group or something where I can actually educate myself on the the language um, and the history and everything would be very helpful. So that's my next step. That's something I'd actually like to do next year if possible. Um, I already started a little bit with the sonnets. I watched a YouTube video last night about the structure of a sonnet and you know learned a little bit about the form. So that was helpful and I just want to do more of that because in the past I've always read just um, without any background context necessarily. Um, I remember growing up like anytime I tried to read introductions or forwards or things I always found myself running into spoilers and I didn't want to ruin the story so I kind of avoided the introdu introductions and forwards but for books like this, you, you really need some kind of help or some kind of class to help you understand. So I'm going to be attempting that very soon. Incidentally, um, I also found these copies secondhand. So these were... These were like a steal, honestly. I mean, they were a couple of dollars, I think, at a library sale. And they're, let's see, what is, this is called the Classics Club. Anyway, it's an old, like, 1937 edition. So I think library sales are truly one of the best places to find books because oftentimes they're just trying to get rid of the books as fast as they can. So the prices are always really, really good. So I've got... The comedies, the tragedies, and the histories, and now the sonnets. And one of these might include the sonnets, but I, I'm not sure, actually. Let me check real quick. I think it'd be in the... Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, so this actually does have the sonnets. But nothing wrong, whoops, with having a standalone copy. Um... And supporting, of course, local bookstores right now. It's really important. I also went to Barnes & Noble um, a few days ago. But I was disappointed because I didn't see any good sales going on. I did see some books that thought about buying. Um, 
wanted to get a book by W.G. Sebald called Austerlitz. And there was another one. I can't remember what it was. But see, I know I can get those books for a lot less on eBay. So I'm probably going to wait and do that. Um, so that was my Shakespeare excursion slash bookstore trip. Super fun. And I think I need to go back there more frequently because it's the kind of place that gets a fair amount of used books, but you kind of have to go there semi-regularly to, to get those deals. Um, as far as what I'm reading right now, I finally got back to my Lawrence of Arabia books that I got for Christmas like a year or two ago. And first one is, whoa, perspective. Okay, to begin the world over again, Lawrence of Arabia from Damascus to Baghdad by John C. Holzman. Had this book a long time, finally started reading it, kind of blew through the first half. It was very interesting. It's a slightly more simplified biography than, say, uh, Lawrence of Arabia by, or not Lawrence of Arabia, Hero, the Life and Legend of Lawrence of Arabia by Michael Corda and A Prince of Our Disorder by John E. Mack. So this book is certainly shorter and simplified. The author, interestingly enough, he um, is an advisor for international relations. And so he kind of inserts his own thoughts about what he calls nation building in here, uh, which is kind of an interesting addition to this story. Um, certainly the main reason I recommend learning about Lawrence of Arabia is because um, you can learn about all the mistakes that were made in the early 1900s, which are still being made today in terms of how foreign powers are interfering in other countries and just, you know, probably causing more trouble than they're trying to solve or purportedly trying to solve. So yes, I will have more thoughts about this book later. For now, suffice it to say, I think it's worth reading if you're interested in this topic. And I think, you know, if you've read the movie and you don't want to read a super long biography, this seems to be a pretty good pretty good starting point. It's not quite as nuanced as I would like, and the annotations are not as many as I would like. In fact, they're relatively few. But I think for the most part, it seems like a well-written book. So that's To Begin the World Over Again, a book about Lawrence of Arabia. Um... Yeah, and then I'm gearing up to resume reading The Boy in the Mask, which is one of the newer biographies of him that's supposed to have some new information. So that's what I'm reading, uh, physical copy. Let me switch to my other screen here. And I want to show you what I'm reading um, digitally, if I can find it here. So currently reading this book called Datura, or A Delusion We All See by Lena Krohn. So this book is written by a Finnish author, and uh, that was the reason that I'm reading this book. So to, you know, to get exposure to other, other authors from other countries, this is also for a read-along. And Let's see here. It's kind of interesting. So it's it's a it's a novel. So there's a frame story. It's fantasy. Well, it's fan. It has fantasy elements in it, but it's more magic realism. I think would be a fair thing to say. And I think the author's been compared to Kafka, and even August Strindberg, who we talked about in previous videos. So, coming fresh off of Strindberg and rereading Kafka, I was obviously very interested to see how this author compares. 
Um, I would say I'm enjoying the book so far. It's rather strange. But I do like this format of these little vignettes or mini chapters. And I... Let's see. I think stylistically, I'm not strongly reminded of Kafka or Strindberg yet. In fact, I would say she reminds me more of Yoko Ogawa, who wrote um, The Memory Police. I'll, I can show you that real quick. If I can type here. Yeah, so this is a Japanese novel I read, I want to say earlier this year, or was it last year? I don't remember, honestly, I don't I think it was earlier this year. Um, yeah, this was a much lauded book by Yoko Ogawa, a dystopian surrealist novel. I wrote a book review of this on my blog, which you can check out if you like. Um, my feelings on the book was that conceptually it was good, it started out good, but I really didn't like it the more I read and so by the end of the book, I was just really not buying it, both in terms of some of the, shall we say, explicit content in the book, but also there were like significant character slash plot holes. I mean, maybe not plot holes, but like the character just didn't seem, or this main female character, she just wasn't consistent in her behavior, which felt like it was just weak character writing. I mean, not that people don't act inconsistently, but there were definitely things that felt like character holes, if you will. So I just wasn't as impressed. Um, it was definitely memorable. But additionally, I mean, other reviewers also felt like the book just didn't have much going on. So I don't know. You can try it. It does have sort of a Kafka feel to it, although it's been compelled com being compared to Orwell for some reason, which I don't, I don't really see that as much. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a digression, but uh, was definitely reminded stylistically of this book by um, the last one we were looking at, this Datura. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. I will probably do a video on it after finishing. Um, I don't really have any huge takeaways from it yet, but it's certainly interesting. So, let's see. I wanted to talk a bit about another book that I have not, well, which I don't have yet, but I'm looking forward to, and this is um, the sequel to Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, called 12 more rules for life or the title is actually beyond order so i watched his his video about this book and basically well first of all if you're not familiar with peterson he is a a psychologist um a, a working psychologist that he's he actually advises people in their um you know personal lives and kind of this cultural figure as well, like a father figure for a lot of people, semi-controversial. Um, you can read all about it online. I did read his first book out of sheer curiosity a couple of years ago, and while I didn't love it, I thought it was worth reading. I mean, for me, like, I have, like, a huge book review on my blog you can read if you like. Um, my blog, by the way, is classicsconsidered.com and um you can yeah just search 12 rules for life and it'll come up but i want i'm planning to do a video on jordan peterson pretty soon but i just want to go ahead and throw this out there um i probably should make this text a little bit bigger so his first book um talks about like the first half of his worldview he believes in this kind of um, chaos versus order dynamic in the world. 
and kind of views life through that lens. I think it's from Carl Jung originally, or maybe even older than that. So um, yin yang, that kind of thing. Um, So first book was about rules or order. And then this book is going to be more about chaos and how you need a little chaos in your life um, to counterbalance too much order. So I'm thinking this will be extremely interesting. I think a lot of us have felt like we have experienced chaos this year, for example, with the pandemic and just, you know, all the things that have happened, not just the pandemic. Um, And I'm curious not only how current events have influenced this sequel, but also how Peterson's own life has influenced it. He's been through some pretty traumatic personal experiences recently, including like almost dying. So I think this should be a very, very interested book, interesting book. And I'm actually more hopeful in this book than the first book. So uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. If you want, like, I would certainly recommend reading the first book if if it interests you, or just listening to the audiobook. Um, it really does, I think, from what I can from what I can tell, you can get much of the same information from his YouTube videos. I think what you find in the book is probably more personal anecdotes, which I thought were the best parts. So. Um, yeah, that's just sort of a, a preview to another video I will be doing and a heads up in case you were a fan of Peterson or mildly interested in his writings. Um, let's see. So that was the new release coming up next year, which you can pre-order. Um, not a sponsor by the way. And yeah, it got me, I've been thinking about these topics a lot more recently, again, because of the pandemic. And been talking with a friend also about Peterson and how um, some of his ideas have helped me. For example, a year ago, well, so I read his first book about two years ago. A year ago, I actually took one of his questions in the book, which was, what would your life look like if it were better? And I made a list of of things I thought would make life better. (laughs) Again, very uh, subjective. And then I said, okay, so here are the things on the list that I can change. And then here are some other things I can change. And I think it was about 13 things. Um, And then over time, I just sort of went back to the list and said, okay, am I making progress in any areas? Um, Like the ones that I can change, like, have I done anything to try to change them? Interestingly enough, like a year later, I have completed either of my own doing or incidentally about eight out of 13. So I think that's pretty good. Um, I think my life is somewhat better. It's more of a, I guess, a psychological exercise. It's not that it's going to hurt your life by any means. Um, I think what you do realize, though, is that over time, your perceptions of what makes your life better change. So what you thought a year ago may or may not still be true by the time you've actually completed it. And that kind of brings me to something else that I was, what that I've been thinking about lately, which is... You know, if if you if people change as much as they do, and if um, you'd like to improve your life, right? You kind of have to take it in what uh, the software world would call an iterative approach. So there's this concept. I mean, since we're on this topic, I'll just go ahead and talk about it. There's this concept of. Um, agile development. So agile development, if you're not a, whoa, if you can type, that is, 
it's a practice that is used in the software world pretty much universally now. Um, that instead of coming up with this grand idea and an intricate plan right at the beginning, instead what you'll do is you'll you'll deliver your product in cycles. I don't know if you can see this. Okay, let me make this smaller. Yeah, so this one, for example, shows a uh, planning stage and then you do some design. You know, how is this app going to look on someone's phone? And then you get your programmers to develop a small piece of it. You um, test it, you know, make sure it's not going to break anything. Make sure people can actually use it, that little piece that you made. Then you um, actually put your product out in the world. And maybe it's like the most basic version, but you put it out in the world, you do some more testing with the people using it and get some feedback, and then you just start over again. And so you just do these loops, basically. And that prevents you from putting too much effort in at the beginning uh, to something that you haven't tested yet. And so same thing with your life, I think, like, and I don't know, like I haven't watched enough Peterson, so I don't know if he actually suggests this at all, but personally, like my own feeling is that if you take this kind of approach to these kinds of exercises, such as, you know, what would, what would your life look like if it were better? Um, I think you'll find that it does get better because you'll need to obviously evaluate your goals every so often, maybe every month. And if you take that kind of cyclical cyclical approach, then you're not going to be spending too much time on efforts that are going to be wasted. And you can also allow yourself to change and be influenced by things that happen. You know, for example, maybe you had a goal of uh, traveling the world, right? And you saved up all your money and all of your vacation time and then the pandemic happened and you're stuck, right? So obviously that's something you can't control, you know, the pandemic happening. Um, But, and maybe that's still your goal, right? And that's fine too. Um, But maybe the pandemic didn't happen and maybe you just realized, hey, I actually want to do more things in my local community after all. Like maybe I don't actually want to leave and travel the world for a year. Um, so as you yourself change or events change, this kind of this cycle lets you uh, adjust your goals. And so I think that's pretty important and, and pretty useful. Um, I think... But yeah, so one thing, the other thing I want to say about that, and I know this is really not to do with books, but these are just some things I've been thinking lately as I've been reading and learning and watching YouTube videos and such. Um, the other thing I was thinking was, um, I think it, so, you know, people always say, oh, after you graduate, you will wish you were back in school. And so I've been trying to think, you know, now that I've been working and out of school for a while, but I'm st- I'm seeing other people who are still in school, like my brother, for example, or others. And I'm, I'm thinking, well, you know, now that I've been working for a while, do I, do I miss being in school? And I think the answer is yes and no, because on the one hand, school gives you these, well, first of all, school is a lot of work and it's, Uh, very very stressful if you're trying to get good grades and stuff and not only that but stakes are pretty high because you're spending all this money and if you don't pass the class well then you've wasted time and money and you have to start over if you can um so lots of things can happen that are just extremely negative and bad for your mental health so i don't really miss school (laughs) because of that Um, I also didn't really have weekends when I was in college because I was just studying all the time. Um, Probably too much. Like my biggest piece of advice to people in college would be don't study too much. Um, Try to aim for good grades, but don't 
be a perfectionist because long term it probably isn't going to be that useful like after you graduate um but that's kind of a tangent what i was trying to say though is that what i do miss about college is having seasons of life so instead of just being like work you have to create seasons for yourself by accumulating time off and then deciding okay i'm going to take off this chunk in the summer or maybe around the holidays and then you know school kind of gives you both right <laughs> and it uh, plans everything out for you in advance so i kind of miss that part of it also uh, work can be more like the seasons of work can be much much longer than college you can find yourself working on projects for an entire year whereas in college you know you do your quarter your semester and then maybe you'll move on to the second part of that um, sequence of classes but you still have like completed something and you're making progress and maybe you have a new professor the next quarter so I do miss that piece of it and the flexibility to take a break if you absolutely needed to or you know do something different so I can see why people say they miss college overall I really probably don't miss it that much but I think seasonal living is something that we need to get back to as a culture. Um, I think that it's something that we had for so long as a human species, as, you know, the human race. But then, you know, we reach this point now where we don't really live by the seasons. You can get any food you want at the grocery store anytime for the most part and there's less of this sense of time passing in the ways that it used to be and your habits can stay the same more or less you don't have to uh, change your habits based on the seasons changing as much um, so yeah I think there's something healthy though about having seasons because if you don't have the structure in place to take a break for example or to try something different and new then I think you can get really bogged down in whatever you're working on and so um tying this back this long tangent back into reading um oh sorry you know I had some notes on this next thing I wanted to talk about and now I can't find them um okay here they are that's right so to make a segue into or back into books, I wanted to talk about ways you can read more. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm going to switch over to my, hmm, where are you? My LibreOffice Writer program. And let's see if I can show it on OBS here. Oh, there we go. So talking about seasons of life, talking about trying to have a good um, a good number of breaks when you need them and just doing things that are good for your mental health. So I wanted to talk a little bit about a subject that I've been thinking about a lot this year because it's been, I don't know about you guys, but it's been kind of a difficult year for reading. Um, not that I've read any less than I usually do. I mean, about the same, but I just haven't felt like reading much this year. It looks so... Oh, okay. Um, I guess that's better. So yeah, um, so I want to talk about my advice for how to read more. I've watched one or two videos about this this year. And I would pretty much agree with what those people recommended. And so I kind of wanted to add some more to that. And maybe, you know, if you guys have suggestions, let me know in the chat. Um, so I'm just going to go through the things I came up with. And hopefully, you know, this will this will help. So, yeah, this is, um, you know, for people in a reading rut or... 
maybe you want to read more and you have all the right books at hand and you're, you're motivated, but you just aren't reading for some reason. So here's some, here's my tips for how to, how to improve. So number one thing I would say is that there are so many reasons for reading. And I think oftentimes we don't take the time to think about why we're reading a particular book or books or why we want to read some books, right? There's just a myriad of reasons that you might want to read a book. It might be because, um, you know, you want to be entertained, which is totally cool. I really have nothing against that. And that's how I first got into reading. So that's awesome. I mean, I think reading gives us, uh, I feel like the word, the phrase safe space is kind of overused, but you know, it is a safe space to just have some break from the real world once in a while. So that's a reason you read, you know, another reason might be um, to be able to have conversations with people. And that's why, you know, book clubs will choose a book to read and everyone reads that book because it's expected that they'll have a conversation out of that. So a, a conversation starter, basically. You know, and with that is some um, reading books to impress people with your knowledge, but uh, we won't go there right now. Um, so another reason might be uh, to learn something. To form your ideas, learn about other people's ideas. I mean, there's just tons and tons of reasons um, to... Yeah, well, we'll leave those the way they are. Those are all pretty broad and I'm sure you can extrapolate. So I think it's, I think you need to figure out why you read and it doesn't, like there's no wrong reason to read unless you're like actually a criminal trying to learn how to commit crimes or something. Um, find out why you read and make sure you understand that because if you don't, then you may be using the wrong methods of trying to read more. So, and, and you know what, sometimes, you know, different reasons call for different approaches. So that's going to be the number one thing I would say. The second thing I would say is also very important is try to um, figure out why you don't read. And again, this is something where if you don't actually take the time to think about it, you may make some assumptions. Your first assumption might be, well, I just don't have time. Um, but it might actually be, well, I don't feel like using the time that I have to read. And that's often the case for myself. And so they have to figure out, okay, why do I not want to do that? You know, do I have conflicting priorities? Is there something else that I'm much more interested in doing. Um, have I just been feeling lazy re recently? Um, you know, sometimes you do have to actually form a habit. But if you're somebody who typically likes reading and you just don't know why you don't like to, then it might be something where you need to invest a little more time in your self-care. Maybe um, you have... Maybe you have, um, sorry, reading habit. Maybe you have stuff going on in your life and you're not doing anything to resolve that. So you might want to think about actually not reading on purpose and figuring out what those things are and trying to make some improvements there if you can. Um, yeah, and that's that's going to be super specific to everyone's situation, but I think that if that's what's really holding you back from reading, then you shouldn't even try to read. Just go focus on that stuff and you know when you're ready to read again, you'll come back. You know, it's never going to go away. So 
So those are my top two things. Um, the rest of these are a little bit more, I guess you could say, standard things. Um, maybe I'll make this slightly smaller again because I want to make sure you can see it. I wonder why these paragraphs are so gigantically spaced. Hmm. Okay. Maybe it's just the font itself. We'll we'll switch it back to something else. Oh, so much better. Okay. Um, next thing I would say is um, try different genres. So if you tend to read the same things all the time and you're just finding yourself not wanting to, getting really bored, it's okay to try something really different. Like, I mean, wildly different. Even try, like, graphic novels if those are not, like, even if you've never read a graphic novel in your life, um, try something like that. Try a, I don't know, an old hard-boiled detective novel or something. Just pick the most, like, out there thing that you wouldn't read. I mean, assuming you could tolerate it, like, it wouldn't be distasteful to you. Um, and give it a go. And, you know, just getting out of your comfort zone can be very, very helpful. For a long time, I didn't really read nonfiction. I was just always reading novels and stuff. And I think that switching to more nonfiction actually got me out of a lot of reading ruts. And now, you know, that kind of helps. Like when I get bogged down in fiction, I can switch to nonfiction and still be reading, still be learning and thinking. So yeah, you might even find a genre you really enjoy that you never expected. Another thing that I want to say is try audiobooks or YouTube videos. You know, just like with seasonal living that our ancestors were so familiar with, um, this tradition of storytelling is something they were also familiar with and we are losing in the modern day. So if you find books to be boring, I think... You can get the same value of a book out of listening to a book, or watching a vid video of somebody telling a story. And you know, maybe that's a, a TED talk or something, but you know what I mean. Like, don't rule those out. Don't feel like, oh, audiobooks aren't reading. I mean, I think it counts. I think it's the original form of, of you know, storytelling, basically. So, um, yeah, before there was the written word, there was the spoken word. So... Don't feel bad about watching those podcasts or listening to those audiobooks. Um, again, thinking about why why you read, maybe you can get that same um, meaning out of some other other medium. And there's nothing wrong with that. I have two more here, so. Uh, make really small goals. Oh, we lost the lost the formatting. Okay. Something I used to do and I will never do again is I used to um, pick up all of these ambitious reading goals on Blogger, and they were really fun, right? Like read-alongs. Um, read these lists of books, you know, I, I would try to join all these challenges in December for the next year. And that was uh, not so great. I mean, it's not that I didn't do any of them, but oftentimes I just couldn't keep up or I just didn't want to, had different interests the next year than I thought I would. So my, my advice is uh, make goals, but make them really small so that you can complete them sooner and not feel overwhelmed or like you're doing an assignment or something. Um, for example, let's say you want to read a new author. You might consider reading a short story by them instead of a novel. Oops. Short stories. Um... 
If you want to read a big chunkster book, like something really long, you might say, well, I'm going to read part of a book by X date and then reassess. You know, maybe I'll read Les Mis. Whoops. Maybe I'll read Les Mis from December or from January to say uh, February. And if I don't enjoy it, you know, it's not a crime to not finish it. Or hopefully by that point, I'll really enjoy it and I'll want to keep going. So um, that's something I would also recommend. There's also, you know, challenges of just reading a chapter a day. Um, for me, that would be way too slow. But, you know, that can also really help. Last thing I think I will mention is reading Oops, reading with somebody else. Whoa, what's wrong with you? I think it's just not using the right font. So reading with someone else. And the key here, I think, is it's got to be somebody that someone you know well and someone and see often <laughs> because um, if you don't then it'll be just too tempting to just drop off the face of the map i used to join all these read-alongs and um, nobody really noticed if i was participating or not because by the time it was time to check in you know there were maybe 20 people in the read-along and you know i could sort of just disappear <laughs> gradually uh, without anyone noticing really so yeah, but if you read a book with somebody you see fairly often and who can keep you on track, and you can keep them on track, and have someone to talk to you about it, then you'll really find a lot more motivation to, to actually read the book. And they um you know, they they'll they'll keep you interested in reading the book, hopefully just because they'll be seeing you and they'll be um, pestering you to read it. So, uh, yeah, those would be my top ideas. I think the top two or three are the most important, but like all of these can be helpful and there's really nothing wrong with taking a break if you need to. I've had entire years where I just didn't really read as much and that was okay. Um, it didn't go away. I eventually started reading again. Um, I know people that, will go a long time without reading anything and then all of a sudden they just read a bunch of books in a row because they have these, again, seasons of life and that's totally cool. So you can have seasons within your reading life and then seasons in your life of which reading is just a part. So yeah, I think that that, that works out really well. Um, Sometimes something I have like with YouTube is, or with Instagram and YouTube is, I feel like, oh, I, I should be reading more because people are expecting content, right? Or um, I should be buying more books because people really like seeing them. And, you know, that's not wrong necessarily. Um, but at, over time too, as you read more, you'll have more thoughts about what you've already read. I mean, there's books that just continue to sit in my brain and I I don't um I don't forget about them you know like they just continue to leak knowledge into my brain and I think uh, that's why I like classic literature so much is because it just it's a gift that keeps on getting giving literally you get so much out of a single reading of a book and of course if you read it many times you get even more um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else I had for that, but I think that was it. I think that was it. Um, so 
something I wanted to do soon, speaking of goals, is maybe reevaluate my my reading goals. Um, so I mentioned earlier I'm on this book buying ban till the end of the year, and I will show you why in just a moment if I can pull it back up here. So there's a challenge, speaking of um, speaking of ambitious goals, there's a challenge called the Classics Club, and I think I've mentioned it before. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it on a previous live stream. Anyway, what you do is you make a list of 50 books to read in, I think it's five years. As you can see, um, I've read very few of the books on my list, which is unfortunate. A lot of classics on here, obviously. I mean, these are all classics, but like a lot of really large ones because when I made the list, I was like, I'm going to read all the books that I've been procrastinating on. Well, making a list doesn't necessarily um, result in that. But the other kicker is I do own some of these. For example, I have The Age of Innocence. I've got The Last of the Mohicans. Um, I've got The Moonstone, Bleak House, Testament of Youth. So I've got a lot that I own already. So that was kind of the motivation for taking a book buying break. I'll, I mean, just till the end of the year, so only a few more weeks, but I've got plenty of books I can read. Um, and I want to make a big dent in this list starting like yesterday. Um, so my next book I think I'll probably read that's not... So after I get through these Lawrence of Arabia books, and maybe that other one on China that I just got and I showed last time, I think the next thing I will do is probably read The Age of Innocence because I know that'll be a fairly quick read based on my previous encounter with Edith Wharton. I read The House of Mirth for a read-along. And I don't think I'm going to like it because I didn't like the other book. But I think I'd like to just go ahead and read it since I have it. Um... I think common sense is pretty short too. So some of these shorter ones I might go ahead and try to try to get those off of the list too. Oh yes, I also have the jungle and I'm really looking forward to that one, so that may be forthcoming. Yeah, okay, so that's the Classics Club that I need to make some progress on. Um, in the future, I don't know if I would do this, honestly, because I'm a very spontaneous reader, and I don't actually enjoy... Like, I enjoy making the list, but I don't enjoy sticking to it, because I just like to read whatever sounds good at the time. But these were all books I figured I should read sooner or later. So... Hence this list. Um, other than that, I don't think I'll be doing any challenges next year. Um, except my usual Goodreads challenge. So I'll be doing that. I think this year I committed to 45 books and I'm almost there. Um, I usually do like... I think I usually do somewhere between 30 and 50 books. I don't know if I've ever done 50, actually. And this year, you know, 45 was also kind of just cutting it close because it's just not been a great year for me for reading in terms of volume of books. 
Um, but that's okay. I've had some really good reading experiences, and I think that's what's the most important. So I think next year I'll probably set a goal of 40 instead of 45. I'm just keeping it low. I, I guess I just like doing it. I mean, I don't know why. I think numbers is just more doable for me than specific titles because I know I'm going to be reading, but it doesn't mean I want to be reading certain books. So, yeah, I think I will do the Goodreads challenge next year. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other challenges I've heard of upcoming. Um, there's one called Back to the Classics, so I guess I'll show that to you if I can find it. And I've tried to do it before. Let's see. Sorry, I'm just trying to find it here. Okay. So there's another one called, oops. I'm just moving things all over the place here. Let's see if I can. Um, feeling confused, okay. Okay, so on this blog called Karen's Books and Chocolate, there's a a challenge called Back to the Classics, which she's been doing for years. And it's actually a really fun challenge if you can stick to it, which I'm sorry to say I never have. But it's, I like the categories. I mean, different uh, time periods, different types of authors, and, you know, trying to get people out of their comfort zones too. So um, this is something that would be fun to do. Um, I'm not going to be doing it personally, but I, I know other bloggers who are. And so if you're looking to get into challenges, I think this is a really good one for classic literature. This is um, Karen's Books and Chocolate.blogspot.com. Oh yeah, looks like there's actually a giveaway involved. So that's another reason to do the challenge. The other one that I really like, let me see if I can find it off screen. It's called Mount to be Read. And it's on a blog called My Reader's Block. Blogspot.com. So, this one. This is designed for people like me. <laughs> Basically, you choose books that you own, that are owned before the year that you're starting the challenge for. So, newly purchased books do not count, which is very, very smart. And basically, you can say, I'm going to read 12 books from that pile, 24, or 36, etc., and it's kind of mountain themed here. So yeah, I have done this one in the past. I don't think I've ever completed it. This would be a good one to do. Um, 12 might be ambitious for me, so I know it shouldn't be, but it might be. So I don't know. I like to, I like to think about this challenge, but I kind of stopped joining challenges in recent years just because don't stick to them very well. But yeah, just heads up, those are available if you're into that. And even if you're not a blogger, it might just be a fun way to keep track of your reading. Well, it's been about an hour. I think I'm going to be wrapping it up here in just a few minutes. If you have any last minute thoughts or questions, let me know in the chat. Um... been yeah it's been kind of a crazy last couple of weeks just a lot going on with work and stuff um but i'm hoping that you know having had such success trying to read this book that i'll be able to finish this this weekend 
and read the other biography that I have about him. Because somebody was asking about it on my Lawrence of Arabia video, and I was like, oh, yeah, I haven't actually read it yet. So I'm going to try to get that video out pretty soon. Might read some Shakespeare. For those of you who might have joined late, we talked about Shakespeare earlier. Shakespeare's sonnets and how I really haven't read them and I'm kind of looking forward to it. I think I will like these better than the actual plays. We'll see. So that's going to be something I'll be reading probably off and on. Yeah, I think that's um I think that's all I had. So thanks to everyone who watched. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and I will be seeing you soon with some more videos and um and try to make the live stream more frequent as well. Oh wait a minute. Oh my. Okay, so something really weird happened. I opened up YouTube on my phone to follow the chat. And for some reason, the chat never loaded. So I didn't see anybody's comments till literally just now when I'm seeing it on my computer. So let's see. Let me respond to the comments before we head out for the day. Um. Hi, Blaj. Good to see you. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking that I would definitely want to read Zabald next year. So I should order that at some point. Because um, the last one that we read, Rings of Saturn, was just really, really good. Um, Isaac says, New Year's Eve resolutions of reading five books a week. Yeah, those are... Um, that, that just isn't isn't good. Um, Buck says hello. Um, Hemerald Cranford says hello. Reading Richard III currently. Buck says, didn't realize you were streaming until too late. Common Sense is 100 pages or so. Jesus Loves You asks, have you read The Possessed by Dostoevsky? I actually haven't. I... I've read um, part of Crime and Punishment. I've read The Brothers Karamazov, Notes from Underground, The Idiot, and White Knights. So, yes, I still need to read The Possessed and also The Double. I tried to read The Double once, but it was just a little strange. Um, yeah, this is crazy. Like, my phone is completely... Okay, so I refreshed my phone and... Now it's showing up. It's funny because I thought like no, literally no one was commenting and it's, it's kind of weird talking to yourself, but knowing there's people watching and like not thinking that they're responding. So that, that, that makes me feel a little bit more sane. Um, no, no, it's okay. So since that I know there's actually like human beings on the live stream and um, this wasn't just some strange experience. Yeah, if anyone actually really has any last thoughts now, I can actually see them and respond to them. Um, and I'll just do a really brief recap here of what we talked about in the live stream. So, um, I went to the bookstore for the first time since spring. And I, uh... Yes, I got this book called The Sonnets. I'm on a book buying ban, but I felt like I really need to support the bookstore, and this was really cheap, honestly. Um, and I just hung out there for like an hour looking at stuff. It was just really fun. So that happened. Uh, I also went to Barnes & Noble, but they didn't have any good sales. So that was a little disappointing, but there were plenty of people there, so I don't think they're going out of business or anything. Um... 
Lawrence of Arabia just briefly talked about this biography. I really like it so far. I'm about halfway. It's quite a bit shorter than all the other biographies I've read. It's a little less nuanced as well. Like, there's actually entire scenes that he kind of just glosses over that are really important. I say scenes, but you know what I mean. Times from his life. Um, so yeah, kind of mixed feelings. I'm going to do a full review of this soon on video, probably, and we'll talk about that in depth. I talked about um, Shakespeare and my sort of love-hate relationship with him. Um, I've read Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, and Hamlet, and I watched a student production of Twelfth Night. And none of those really spoke to me except Hamlet, which I actually did enjoy. But I feel like um, I need to take a class for Shakespeare or like watch videos about him, which I'm starting to do on YouTube, and that should help me appreciate him more. Um, someone asks, I recently found your channel and I didn't know you do live streams. Do you do, you do them often? So I usually do live streams uh, Friday afternoon, evening, my time, Pacific time. And uh, for a while I was sort of just doing them sporadically, but now I'm gonna try to do them more regularly. So it'll be, usually it'll either be like Thursday or Friday night. Um, sometimes other evenings just kind of depends what's going on. I do work full time. So it, you know, juggling the schedule is always something I have to consider. And then I have other things I'm working on, but, um, typically a Thursday or Friday evening is what I aim for. Um, this is the first time I've done it this early. Usually I start more like 8 p.m. Eastern time or, you know, 5 p.m. Pacific time. So we'll see. I might or might not do it this early in the future. Um, what else did we talk about? Oh yeah, I did this whole ramble about Laura, uh, Lawrence, about Jordan Peterson and um, things I've learned from him. And then I also did this whole thing where I added some tips on books, not books, about being able, being able to read more when you don't feel like reading. So I'll just show those on the screen for a little bit. Um, if you missed the Jordan Peterson ramble, no worries. I'm actually going to do a video on that. So that was kind of just a, a warm up. And this one, I might just cut it out and make its own video because I talked about um, like getting into reading ruts and how to get out of them. So I'll probably just cut that into its own video. I don't really like leaving live streams up after the live stream because it just feels weird to me, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm definitely going to talk about how, what I felt about his first book, 12 Rules for Life, um, which I think you've probably already read the review of that. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about that some more and also how I've applied his advice in my life and then talk about thoughts on his upcoming book, his upcoming sequel. So I am excited for that. The second book being... Um, this one called Beyond Order, and this one's coming out, I want to say March or April. I haven't, like, pre-ordered it or anything, but it's coming out sometime in the spring. So that's something to look forward to. Um, again, for anyone joining late, I'm not a huge fan of his first book. Like, I had mixed feelings about it, but I'm a fan of him as a person. So I think the second book will be even better than the first one. So I'm kind of hyped about it. Also, you know, I just have to be hyped about something, right? Like, um, I was, uh, so hyped for the Mulan movie this year and didn't end up watching it, didn't end up wanting to see it. It was just really, uh, so maybe I shouldn't be hyped about this book. Maybe I should like try to be anti-hyped about it and then it'll be like the best book I ever read. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah, that's happening. 
So. <clears throat> Did we talk about anything else? I mean, really, I just kind of talked at length for a few, for all these subjects, but like, that was basically it. Um... Yeah, this one was a lot more rambly than some of my other ones, but it was fun. Um, I think I'm going to go make some dinner now and give my voice a break. And then hopefully this weekend I will have... Well, I probably won't have this book review yet because I want to read the other book and just do a video on both of them. I may or may not read one of these sonnets this weekend. So... We'll see, might do a video on that. Otherwise, I got to finish my Christmas de decorating and just got lots of things to work on. So, um, yeah, thanks to everyone who joined. Sorry um, for the technical difficulties that I uh, wasn't able to see your comments until literally a few minutes ago. Um, I think that, yeah, I guess, let me know if you like this time, if it's too early, um, I might try, I might try some, like, weird times too, like, for, weird for me, like, maybe early morning, because I don't have a lot of people from other time zones watching my, like, regular videos, so be really curious to see if I live stream at other hours, maybe they'd be able to watch too. Um, Blodge says, it's one in the morning. I got my head on backwards and still noting Datura. Yeah, that, that was a weird one. Um, this book that we're currently reading called Datura by Lena Crone, a Finnish author. The uh, cover's pretty weird and the book itself is pretty strange. It's not, like, strange in a distasteful way, or at least not yet. Um, it's just, like, a puzzle. And I'm, I'm liking it so far, but we'll see, we'll see where it goes. I compared the style to this other book that I did a review on, I think it was the spring, maybe? Called The Memory Police, a Japanese novel. This one has been compared to 1984. Um, I didn't really get a lot of 1984 vibes from it, but it does, you know, have sort of a dystopian plot going on. And the language is very um, unsettling. A lot of unsettling things in this book. But not in like a really... Like there are some moments that I really found explicit and distasteful. Which is one of the reasons I didn't like the book as a whole. But most of the book is pretty... Um, pretty low-key. So... Yeah, stylistically, I'm definitely reminded of that one. So, um, I'll be interested to see how this other one, Statuer, goes. So yeah, throwing in some contemporary fiction into the mix of the classical... Li classic literature. Jesus loves you says, I'm from Hungary, so yeah, that would be cool. That's awesome. Thanks for thanks for checking out the channel. Um yeah, so what time like works for you? I did a poll on this months and months ago and I got I mean different people told me what times work best for them, but I'm still curious, like, for those that watch, what times work best for you and of course that's not always going to line up with other people's times, but that's kinda why I want to try different um different times of day. I can usually do either early morning my time on a weekend or evenings any other day. Well, I say any other day. Ideally Friday evening for myself because I get up pretty early in the morning for work. Um, so yeah, 
weekends are a lot more flexible. Something that might work for me and for others would be like Saturday afternoon, which would be evening for European time. Um, usually free on Saturdays. I don't know if others are free Saturday evenings though, so it, it gets to be like tricky. But I think the key is just I'll have to try all the different things and just see what works best. Um... Yeah, so that was that was my my book roundup for the week. Um, I think that it was really good to go to the bookstore, even though I didn't end up buying a lot. Getting kind of just like getting cabin fever, and it's not even like the middle of winter yet, so um, there's literally almost nothing to do around here unless. Like, you go to restaurants or something, but then you have to sit outside, so. <laughs> um, it's just nice to go somewhere and try to feel like life is somewhat normal. Okay, I'm going to go have dinner. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend, day, um, evening, wherever you are. And thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.